You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rustak. What to read next is a question many of us are often left pondering, and thankfully, we don't have to think too hard on how to find the answer. McNally Robinson's Chris Hall joins me now for the October edition of this segment. Hello, Chris. Hello, Simon. Well, as always, it's great to see you. And I want to begin by talking a little bit about this month, the month of October. It is a big one for McNally Robinson. Tell us about uh, what you're celebrating. Well, uh, I know it's hard to believe. It certainly is for me. But um, McNally Robinson has been around for 40 years this year. Um, And not only that, but the store at Grant Park opened 25 years ago uh, as of October 15th. So uh, we are going to celebrate uh, what we're calling celebrating 40 years of reading. And on October 15th, which is a Friday this year, we're going to celebrate over that weekend, the 15th, 16th, 17th. And um, we're going to offer 25% off for our reader reward card holders on uh, books that are in stock. So by way of uh, helping you uh, load up maybe. And, um, and so, yeah, it's going to be fun. We're, we'll be lots, having lots of fun on social media and there'll be some contests. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can mark the occasion appropriately. Oh, I'm I'm sure you will. And uh, what a milestone. 40 years of of McNally Robinson. McNally Robinson has been around my entire life. When I think reading McNally comes to mind, and I'm sure I'm hardly the only one in Winnipeg. What does it mean to have uh, had such a a longstanding presence in the community? I mean, 40 years. It's uh, for me personally, it's 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 really strange. I I really enjoy the day to day work of of the bookstore. So to suddenly realize and do the math (laughs) and realize that's 25 years seems quite remarkable. I was here 25 years ago. I was uh, I helped open this store. So so it's um, yeah, I uh, (laughs) I'm I'm caught a little bit uh, uh, blindsided by it, to be honest. Yeah, it really does sneak up on you, but um, definitely an occasion to fet. Uh, 25 years of, of, of the Grand Park location and 40 years of, of McNally Robinson. And uh, so speaking of that work that you uh, get up to and so enjoy doing, um, let's start off uh, with, uh, with with your first pick for the month of October. What have you queued up? Well, the first uh, book is a novel. It's called Oh, William. It is by Elizabeth Strout. And I'm a bit late to Elizabeth Strout, I have to admit, but I've had it recommended to me from uh, many people. Many authors uh, love her as well. Um, she has written um, a number of novels. All of Kittredge would maybe be the most um, well-known. It won the Pulitzer Prize. She followed that up with another novel called All of Again with the same character, um, as well as the Burgess Boys, Amy and Isabel and others. And so this is an author that likes to revisit characters as she did with Olive. Uh, But in this novel, she goes back to a character named Lucy Barton uh, from the novel named My Name is Lucy Barton. And so Lucy uh, is still in touch with her first husband, William, uh, William of the title. Uh, She's not really sure why, they just are. And um, they reconnect uh, uh, out of chance. Uh, William discovers a family secret in his past. Lucy joins him on a trip to investigate that. Strout is very good at examining intimate realities of characters. She's not writing any plots that are unrealistic. They can be dramatic, but they're they're certainly realistic. And uh, but she really examines those little moments of everyday life. Uh, very good at that. So um, so yeah, uh, she has one new fan in me. So I'm uh, mm-hmm. recommending uh, recommending her. You could start with any novel, really. Well, I mean, in terms of starting uh, with with Elizabeth Strout, I mean, you mentioned this is uh, a revisiting a reintroduction to a character, the the Amgash series, I think it's called. Do you need to have read the previous um, two titles, or does this story stand on its own? You can just jump right into Lucy Barton. Well, well, I read it on its own, and it certainly stands on its own. But it does make reference to uh, stories she's told before, she and so I I presume those are in earlier books. So I think um, I think judging by what I've heard from the people who recommend them to me, I, uh, yeah, I would say you should start with some of the earlier books. Uh, she's the kind of author or you want, want to read more. So there's no harm in that. Uh, uh, you won't read one and, uh, and uh, leave it alone. I don't think. No kidding. Uh, so the next title sounds absolutely fascinating. The Bjorken sagas, a sort of epic fusion is, is, is that right? What do you, what do you call it? <laughs> Well, uh, the author here is Harold Johnson. He's a lawyer by trade, but he's written uh, a number of books, uh, nonfiction titles, Firewater and Peace and Good Order, uh, as well as fiction. And um, but he um, has recently at least uh, really blended fiction and nonfiction. He wrote a book uh, a few years ago called Clifford and Clifford was his brother. Uh, The book is a 
is a biography, but it's not entirely fiction or not. It's not entirely nonfiction. There's some fictional elements, some fantasy elements in it. It's uh, I really liked it. It was a, a great combination. So he's doing something similar in the Björken sagas. He um, he is drawing upon his own Cree and Swedish roots, and he blends those two in myth, fantasy, history. Uh, a character named Harold Johnson. He sorts through the papers of a deceased neighbor, and he discovers sagas that were are um, written down in an ancient Swedish dialect so he arranges to get them translated and those are the stories that make up this new book uh, they have that that old myth style to them uh, they just kind of exude wisdom um, and uh, just those ancient tales uh, told around the fire by traditional storytellers it's uh, it's a real examination uh, uh, yeah and brings a lot of things together it's uh, he's, he's remarkable yeah, it, it sounds like an absolutely um, captivating type of a read, like you say, a blending Cree and Scandinavian roots, two incredible oral traditions, storytelling traditions in those cultures. And so um, mm -hmm. it, it sounds like the two of them coming together. I mean, uh, that, that's got to be just fantastic as a read. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so from that, we move to a, a whodunit queued up next, A Line to Kill, Anthony Horowitz. What can you tell us about this one? Well, Anthony Horowitz is a pretty prolific author. He's uh, written uh, The Word is Murder and The Sentence is Death most recently, but he's written a number of other mysteries as well as lots of books for children. And he's also a prolific screenplay writer uh, for TV. Uh, I watched Foil's War, uh, coincidentally, and realized he was the screenplay writer for, uh, for that uh, TV series. So um, he's having some fun with, uh, with these recent novels, uh, ex-Detective Inspector Daniel Hawthorne is his, uh, is his detective, and um, he has a, side pick, a sidekick na uh, named Anthony Horowitz. And uh, they set off for an exclusive lit literary festival on, the island, on an island off the coast of England. And while hobnobbing with the gathering of luminaries, uh, a local man is found dead. And of course, Hawthorne and Horowitz are called upon to uh, solve the case. So these the novels are, are equal parts enjoyable mysteries and satire in the world of books. Uh, and uh, amusing diversions i guess for mystery and and books lo book lovers yeah that's just it right i uh, always gotta love a good mystery and i imagine this one keeps you guessing and and i feel like we should also rename the segment what to read but also what to watch foil's war i just made a note for myself uh because uh you know i i love a good good story on on, on criminals and resulting chaos and so i mean yeah it's gonna uh, anyway another one to add to the list uh so <laughs> good <laughs> thanks for that one chris and uh <laughs> Uh, next, something, I mean, we go from mystery to, to history, the Greeks by, by, by Roderick Beaton. Um, this one, not only about the Greeks of 2000 years ago, but also their enduring legacy right up to today, right? Absolutely. Uh, so you may be wondering why I would pick such a thing, a, a new history on the Greeks, right? And, yeah, uh, exactly. But First it's, time uh, this has great. been written, I think. <laughs> That's true. Um, but it's become very popular to release novels that retell the ancient Greek stories and myths. I've had a couple at least on uh, that I've brought on with uh, with me. And um, uh, they often are, are retold from the viewpoint of women. Um, and some of these books are proving very popular on TikTok. And uh, that's uh, at least two generations uh, younger than me that uh, yeah, I was going to say like the on. video sharing short video uh, app. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right. Fancy that. Yeah. Yeah, they're calling it book talk, the effect of uh, book sales on TikTok. So, so coincidentally or otherwise, along comes a, a new history of the Greeks and it traces, as you say, the history of the people, but uh, as much their influence on the world we know today. Um, and seriously, the, the, these new books of history, I brought one on, um, I think last year, maybe on Vikings. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, there's, a, there's a process of retelling history too, and, it, and it's um, equivalent to those novels. They're it's from a 21st century perspective. And so the viewpoints of women, the viewpoints of slaves, the viewpoints of people who've traditionally been swept aside in the telling of history, uh, they're given a lot more attention in these books. So, so some, in some ways, uh, these histories do de need to be rewritten, even though, as you say, there's an awful lot of books written about Greek uh, history. So, um, so yeah, uh, it's kind of breaking with tradition a little bit um, and uh, opening up um, at least a wider world of, of that, a wider version of events um if not uh, you know you can't encapsulate everything but they are um a little bit open um open-minded as we would think of it at least mm -hmm. uh fascinating and mm -hmm. uh, there's there's one more pick that you've got for us this is a, a debut right by uh, violin Husman. 
it, yeah, yeah, it's French French name. Uh, Violaine Hausman is what I was going to attempt, but right. uh, well, we'll you could be right. I don't yeah. know. Uh, yeah, Violaine. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, last <laughs> name. Uh, we'll we'll figure that one out later. But tell us about this debut. The debut, the title is The Book of Mother, and it's a novel that comes to us from France. It was written in French originally, uh, where it received lots of prizes and uh, was critically acclaimed. Now, the mother in this title is a tour de force. She smokes too much, she drives too fast, she laughs too hard, and she loves too extravagantly. She's given to fly into rages, and I have to admit, she teeters on the edge of being a little bit too much for, uh, for the reader, but... Uh, but it's a delicate balance, but Houseman, I think, uh, pulls it off. She, um, the, it, because the novel is told from the perspective of mother's daughters, and one daughter in particular named Violaine, uh, coincidentally, um, uh, from, the, uh, from the author. And they grow up with her in the 70s and 80s, and part of what the mother is fighting against, or at least trying to uh, find her way through, is a society that's stacked against her and other women of her time. And when it's put in that context, you kind of understand where the rage comes from it's certainly not a common response to what was happening in the 70s and 80s but but yeah I, I found it kind of understandable and so and the daughters they they both end up benefiting from a world that shifts in time uh, to allow them to live a different life and and so their sympathy for the mother kind of saves the novel from drifting too far out onto where mother seems determined to take it uh so it's a it's a risky balancing act but it ultimately succeeds and it's unlike uh unlike any of the other books I've brought on with me, I have to say. <laughs> I was going to say, what a diverse group of picks you got this time around, as always, Chris. And uh, just before I let you go, I do want to mention uh, one quick thing, a uh, quick plug for the Thin Air Festival, the Winnipeg International Writers Festival that continues. And uh, I understand there's a few events that are going on at McNally still, right? They are, yeah. We are uh, figuring out the uh, idea of what we are calling hybrid events. And so the Writers Festival has been involved with us. We had one I hosted with David Bergen. We had a good time last week. And uh, and what we're doing is having a very small audience. We've uh, walled off the space so we can we can check vaccine cards and uh, and wear masks. And um, but we can fit a hundred people, and uh, so you can be there for in person. And at the same time, we've got webcams set up, and so uh, we are uh, live streaming it out on via Zoom to uh, our YouTube channel. So that's the way we've been doing events. Uh, well for a year and a half now and um and so we're trying to get the best of both worlds and uh so far so good it's been a uh, few kinks to yet to work out but uh but we're working on those so it, it's going to get better and better but yes uh, it is possible to attend an event at mcnally robinson again yeah it's true is and uh people also have to make note uh, of the 40th anniversary the 25th mm -hmm. year of uh, the Grant Park location. So, uh, Chris, let me say it again. A big congratulations to you. And uh, Thank you. thanks so much for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you, Simon. As always, you can find Chris's picks up on the website, classic107.com or mcnallyrobinson.com.